The old man's 50th wedding anniversary is coming up, so me and Corey decided to fix up a 66 Chrysler Imperial convertible as a gift. It's been sitting in the back lot for six years. The old man keeps saying he's going to fix it up. It's never going to happen, so we took the bull by the horns. Hey, Algy. Yes, sir. Where's my Imperial? I don't know, sir. Here's the thing. If this is going to be a surprise, we have to lie to the old man. He's going to flip out. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Corey, Rick, where's my damn Imperial? Sold it. You what? I thought it was just going to sit there and rot, so we sold it for 1000 bucks. Both of y'all are fixing to get the wrath of God from me because I'm so damn pissed I can't even hardly talk. Chumley got the call a couple days ago. Yeah, he was a nice guy. He wanted to turn into a lowrider, put some hydraulics on it. Said something about uh, cheetah skin interior inside of it. There was only 514 of those made. You don't turn that car into a lowrider. Well, it's his car. He can do whatever he wants with it. Well, it shouldn't have been his car. It was my car. Seeing the old man worked up like this makes it so much better, because when we get the car back from Wally and it's fully restored, <laughs> he's going to be one happy camper. I'm so damn pissed I don't even want to talk to you. And you, you're on my list. <laughs> hey, Pops. What? Come out of the parking lot. I got something I want to show you. It's a good reason. Come on. Oh, my <laughs> God. Did you really think we'd sell it on you? <laughs> so what do you think, Pops? Happy anniversary. I'll tell you what. This is class. Yeah, this is this is pimp. This is no, bad. it's not pimp. It's class. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ecstatic. I mean, it's beautiful. You know how much I love these things. Now you can take Grandma out on her 50th wedding anniversary in style. That I will. I'm really excited to take it out for a drive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! Have fun at it, Pops. It's a great 50th anniversary gift for me. But I'm still pissed off. The little bastards lied to me. Check out what I just bought, guys. An aphorism written by Mark Twain. What's an aphorism? Cute little saying, throws down a little bit of knowledge or a little bit of humor. What's it say? One ought never to do wrong when anyone is looking. How much did you pay for this thing? I paid 8,500 for it. For a couple things? I should follow the old man around. He says that kind of crazy stuff all the time. What's that one you say about possums and peach seeds? Tell me to do something for God and country and go back to work. That's a good one right there. I'm going to kick your butt, Tom. Can you threaten to kick me in a funnier way? <laughs> hey, boss. What are you doing, Chumley? I'm about to make some money off your aphorisms. I swear every damn Chumley, at times you're like a fox in a hen house. That's a good one. You're like a fox in a hen house. You are a genius. Guess what I got? Some aphorisms. It's great to be smarter than everyone else, but it's even better when you're the only one who knows. Buy silver, keep silver, sell silver, repeat. I love that one, Chumway. You said it, boss. Of course you do. I'm going to sell them in the shop. I figured I could get about at least 40 bucks a piece. Chum, you're not going to be able to sell these for $40. Well, yeah, I am, because the only thing better than money is more money. All I'm saying, boss, is do something for God and country and get back to work. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Rick, at least he's trying. You know what, Chum? I'm going to let you put them on the wall, and we'll see what happens. If you sell them, you can have half the money. Now who's the smart one? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Pops. What? The reason we have those white lines in the parking lot, you're supposed to park between them, not on them. Look, my damn parking lot, I'll park where I want to. <sighs> OK, Dad, you're the person who gives old drivers a bad rap. Oh, shut up before you even go there. I'm the best damn driver here. I know, Fred Flintstone taught you. <laughs> damn, that was good. <laughs> Tomorrow, I'm giving you a driving test. No, you're not. Just humor me. Ah, screw it, Rick. I'll take the test. Are you all down for this, Dad? Oh, shut up. OK, Dad, I just want you to drive around here, in and out the cones, don't knock any over. This is stupid. I just want to see if you can do it, all right? Why is Chumley on some of them? I'm there to guide you. Chumley, I want to avoid you, so shut up. All right, under over, seven cones. <laughs> Pretty good take off. Oh, oh, God. oh, what? What the hell is he doing? 
think he's... Oh! Is he stopped? He's backing up. <laughs> this is definitely a fail. <laughs> This is scary. You guys might want to back up here. Dad! This is ridiculous. I did it perfectly, son. Dad, you hit every cone. I didn't hit every cone. I missed all of them except the ones with Chumley's face on it. I was taking target practice. What in the hell? Ah. Corey, come. Give me that. Get that out of his hand. Kill the little bastard. What? I was letting you know I was coming. Corey no, bought it, not me. me. What the hell is that thing, Corey? It's an old Japanese World War II air raid siren. Nice. Speaking of that, I want to go see this B-17 today. Look at that beast. A World War II B-17 flying fortress. Yeah. You finally went over the edge. You're now officially senile. I ain't going to buy it, but I'm going to go look at it. They got it on display out here at the airport. You just want to go play. Maybe. Why don't you just retire, and you can look at airplanes all day long? Ooh, and then you can make me partner. Dream on, Corey. This looks awesome. I'll go with you. No, you won't, dum-dum. I'll go by myself. People who are senile should not really be driving. Chumley, drive it. Welcome to the EAA B-17. This thing's awesome, boss. The interesting thing about the B-17, this was designed in 1935. 10 years prior to that, they were making airplanes out of tube, wood, and fabric. This amazing airplane. When I was in the Navy, me and the guys used to love to talk about old planes. It's great to be up close and personal with one, even if I am stuck with Chumley. Well, I can man the guns if you think we'll be in any danger. Give them the whole nine yards. Nine yards? Did you know that? Yeah. Yeah, the length of an ammo belt on a B-17 was nine yards long. That's where that term came from. Look at those guns. You'll note these yellow canisters. This was not a pressurized airplane, so they needed oxygen to sit there and stay alive when they were up in the 30,000-foot range. We're uh, in the radio room right now. This is where the radio operator would have been located. What radio station would you put it on in here, boss? Oh, Jesus, charm with some people's damn children. You now, we've got the bomb bay that we'll uh, be going through and then on into the cockpit. The bomb bay, that sounds dangerous. Oh, it, it was only dangerous if you were one of those bombs because it was going to leave the airplane. Ooh, it's a tight squeeze. Don't get stuck, Chumway. Oh, this is awesome. The last thing we got to do is fly this bad boy. You think we can take it up? Chumway. Quit asking stupid questions. Me and the old man don't really spend enough time alone, hanging out, doing guy things. He might act like he hates me, but we have a good bond. Thank you, you very much. You have a great day. Thank you. Thanks for the tour. Coming. Thank you, sir. You know what, Chumway? What? I should have bought the damn thing. Hell yeah. Hey, Pops. What? We're going to give you an office. I don't want an office. It's going to have a couch and a desk so you can work in there and everything else. Your own bathroom. Rick, I'm happy, Rick, exactly where I'm at. I know what I'm doing. I sit here, I see what's going on in the store. You can't see what's going on with your eyes closed. Will you try the office out if I get you one? I'll try, but I ain't gonna like it. Trust me, you'll like it. I'm gonna make it nice, all right? I still won't like it. Now go to work. What do you want to show me, Rick? Can we please just indulge me? Surprise! This is nice. What is it, Rick? This is your new office. Big power desk, you got your computer right there, couch. Try the desk out. <sighs> yeah, this will work. We did it, guys. I think he actually cracked a smile. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Enjoy the office, old timer. And I even made you some coffee. Thank you. How come no one's answering the phone? I don't know. I'm so taking that office. No, I'm taking that no. office. My office. It's my office. Earlier, I bought an old 1886 Winchester off a guy. And these knuckleheads think they're a better shot than me with their fancy modern guns. So we're headed to the range to prove who is the best shot. Really, Dad, why are you wearing a suit? I mean, we're in a shooting range. So, I'm shooting a suit. You could at least wear some sneakers. I don't have any. 
These guys better stop worrying about how good I look and start worrying about how good I can shoot. I'm gonna show these boys how it's done today. All right, guys, everyone gets five shots. Best five shots wins. Ready? Aim. Yeah, that felt good, Big okay. Hoss. I thought five rounds we were supposed to shoot, guys. Why are we playing by your stupid guns rules? It's hard to control it's yourself. Versus old. I only had eight. Well, let's go see who had the best shot then. Fine. Y'all go ahead. I'm not walking out there. <laughs> I already know that I knocked the bullseye out of that thing. No need to scuff my shoes to go check it out. How many times did you hit the second circle, Rick? Because I hit it twice. Well, I did pretty good. Every one of my shots was in the black. Wait a minute. I got six holes. What do you guys shot my target? I didn't. We all know who has the worst aim here. That's I, Big Hoss. I figured I'd take out everybody's. I took five shots, got them all in. You took 50. You got 50 shots, and you got eight in the target. Yeah, at least got to look at my target. I know you didn't do this. Right there, that's consistency. You had like 50 rounds, chum. It, we were going for best shot, and you can't deny me that that was the best shot so far. Let's look at the old man. Oh, <laughs> Damn, the old man came with the heat. <laughs> Damn, in the He only center. had eight shots. He hit it all seven. He hit a seven out of eight. I'm saying the old man won this time. He might have won, but I'm not telling him. Three-way tie, old man lost. Sounds good to me. Let's right. go. Grandpa, you're the only one that didn't hit it. Looks like a three-way tie. Oh, shut up. <laughs> what do you think? Well, it's definitely different. What in the hell is this thing? It's a mid-60s Electric King, the little electric car. This looks like something Mr. Potato Head would drive. <laughs> I came to the pawn shop today to sell my little electric car. I'm hoping to get around 3,500. I guess I'd take 15. I know they got to make money, too. So how fast is it? 2530. It'll keep up with the moped. It was designed to be a cheap commuter car. It was pretty much maintenance-free. Rick, this thing can make a hell of a golf cart. Really could be a golf cart, because there's no place to put your clubs. Put some racks on the back. <laughs> <laughs> That's my old man. He loves just about any old car, even if it's an electric one from the 60s that no one's heard of. So how does this thing drive? Can I show you? Sure. This thing would be like a beer can in a collision. <laughs> <laughs> Don't know what you're missing. That's got to be the most unnatural thing I've ever seen. <laughs> it does take some getting used to. <laughs> this car can't decide if it's a golf cart, a bumper car, or the world's oldest Prius. It's weird, but I like it. <laughs> so how much you want for this thing? I'm thinking around $35. Dollars? Nah, 100 I'm just trying to figure out if there's something I can do with it. I don't think people collect these things. Well, you've never seen one. I've never seen a petrified dinosaur <laughs> turd, but I don't think there's a market for one. <laughs> yeah. I give you 500 bucks for the thing. 500 bucks? I mean, I got to figure out something to do with it. This is not going to be an easy sell. Oh, come on. How about 1,500 bucks? I mean, I'll go 600 bucks, and I don't even know why I'm doing it. I still don't know what the hell I'm going to do with it. That's the best you can do? That's it. That's it. Well, I guess six it is. Six is a deal, man. Let's go write it up. Wee. Whoopee. Dad, what in the hell are you doing? Hey, this is pretty cool. <laughs> What's going on here, guys? I mean, this thing's supposed to be done in three days. I have a party planned, and this is the center of the party. I mean, really, all we have to do, we have to put on the rear end, the springs, drop the motor, Boom, boom, boom. Absolutely. All of this, in theory, it should just go right back together. Yeah, up. in theory. In when theory, have you ever yeah. bolted anything back together and it went back perfect? We'll make that party, brother. We will make that party. All right, guys, I got my fingers crossed. We do, too. Today's the day. I want this to be a big surprise, so I'm taking the old man out to lunch to throw him off track. How is it, Pops? It's outstanding. 
But on the way back to the shop, I'm gonna tell him I need to pick something up at the counts. I cannot wait to see his face. Damn it, Rick. We just gotta pick something up real quick. Rick, there's some nice cars here. You could have got me one for my birthday. I got you biscuits and gravy. Oh, oh my God. you're a cheap ass. You, you are be... never happy. Surprise! Oh, my God. <laughs> happy birthday. It's a 57 Chevy 150. That is one beautiful car. That's the most beautiful thing i ever seen. You outdid yourself. <laughs> Check that out. <laughs> that's a rocket. So you guys are sure that's enough to get him up to 45 on the freeway, right? Oh, you ass. <laughs> <laughs> we teased the old man, but 70 is a big deal. But it kills me that this car will never go above 45 miles an hour. <laughs> hey, Count, crank her up. I want to hear it. You got it, sir. <laughs> There's one stipulation for this gift. What's that? You got to retire. OK. Day after I die. <laughs> OK. <laughs> All right, Pops. Come on, get out of my car. <laughs> Come try this thing on, brother. I'll see you guys bright and early tomorrow morning. But we got cake for you. Screw the cake. Woo. I think I did it. I think he's happy. Yeah! Rick is a great son, but he can be a cheap SOB. It means the world to me that he did this.